Well, I like your other movies. I mean, they've all been really nice films, but this kind of is off in some other land. I mean, were you scared ever, you know, that this movie could easily get out of control or wasn't going to equal the first one or, you know, because I think this movie was filled with potholes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of, it, it was definitely fraught with danger. There's no question about that. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, making a sequel to a film that was a hit, which right there, boy, you're really setting yourself up for a fall. And uh, I was working with Arnold, who was now a big megastar, and I didn't know what that was going to be all, all about, you know, because I hadn't worked with him in years, and that turned out to be great. You know, he was a total pro, and we got along just like we did on the first film. But, you know, there were a lot of danger signs for me as a director, but, you know, fools rush in. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was a little scary at times. I mean, just your... I don't know who made you work on such a short time frame, but I mean, that was pretty insane. You know, well, just trying to get all these things technically done. I, I just don't see how you did it, really. I don't think probably. you probably know how you did it. No, it was, it was pretty gonzo. But, you know, the idea was a film like this wants to come out in the summer, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and so it was either this summer or next summer. If it was next summer, we'd have been working on it for too long. Yeah. So, so we went for it. And, uh, you know, it was tough. We had, to, we had to bring in a lot of people. I had two co-producers working with me on this and three editors and all that sort of thing. But Did you have any idea how spectacular the special effects were going to be? Well, you know, you imagine them, but you don't ever expect them to come up to your imagination. This film, they came up to my imagination, you know, and that's, that was a real special thrill. I don't want to have them give away secrets. Is that Mercury they're using, or is that a trade secret? It's a trade, trade secret. No, secret. it's not a trade secret. We, used, uh, we studied Mercury, we looked at what it did, and we copied it using computer animation. Mm. And they, would, they took, uh, you know, Robert Patrick, the actor that plays the T-1000, they took his face and they digitized it, and they made him a database in the computer. And then they could push it, pull it, twist it, do whatever they wanted with it, and, and make it look totally real. And how close are we uh, to having a movie that almost ILM just makes on their own? And uh, I don't know, maybe 25 years we won't have actors anymore. We'll just have databases. I mean, that's really has gotten to where it's just uh, not fakey at all. No, no. I no. mean, they've gone so far since the Star Wars it's days. Not, it's not fakey at all. You're absolutely right. They can create a real image that's completely synthesized. You know, it's, it's kind of a little bit scary. You know, you could have a president die and you wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess if I you know, had something to do with it, that's true. They could synth <clears throat> synthesize him, you know. I was reading some Cameronisms. I love Cameronisms. They're great. <laughs> Bad acting. Call the acting police. That's right. I used to give Eddie Furlong tickets from the acting police. <laughs> well, he is an amazing kid, though. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, it's obviously he was, you know, I wasn't obviously he was a rookie, but I mean, this guy has some natural, a lot of natural ability. Yeah. But I guess yeah. something when you get long dialogue, acting police, you know, called <laughs> in, right? it was just a little, a little way we had of communicating. You know, uh, I, I thought if I always made a joke out of it and I never really put pressure on him, it would always be better. You know, so I always made it a joke. It was like, oh, Eddie, Eddie, <laughs> you're going to get a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, there's another camerism scene. That's exactly what I don't want. That's I right. like that one. Though. That's so. exactly what I don't want. <laughs> That's great. That's some funny things. I don't remember saying all those things, but I, I probably did. Well, I'm sure you did. And, I, and this crew that you worked with, I mean, is this your normal crew, or was it just put together for this film? You have a lot of the people you normally work with. Well, I wanted to work with my camera crew from the Abyss, uh, but um, they were unavailable. And then uh, I found out that Adam Greenberg who shot the first film was available. I didn't think he was. And so uh, I actually wound up putting back together a lot of people from the first film. And I hadn't worked with them since then. The composer is the same guy from the first movie. The editor, one of the three editors, you know, cut the first film. Adam shot the first film. You know, and the makeup people, Stan Winston, uh, you know, the only real new addition were ILM. And I had worked with them on The Abyss. So, yeah, I did try to surround myself with people that I knew and trusted. I remember when I was a small child, uh, my film teacher in college said that, you know, a great film can be told when you cut the sound down. You can just watch it. But the unsung hero of this film, and I'm fairly confident that it'll get an Academy Award, are the people who did the sound. They did a great job. I mean, the sound is very much a co-star with yeah. anything else that goes on here. It's very important. Yeah, it's the Lucasfilm people at, at Skywalker Sound up in, uh, you know, up in San Francisco. Uh, and they did a great job, and they didn't have a lot of time. I mean, is this something you have to, I mean, you have to think about it all, but I mean, did you put a lot of emphasis on the sound, or is that just something that just kind of comes with it? Well, the sound brings it to life. So, yeah, I get very involved in that, and it has to be the right sound, and the music has to be right, and sometimes you've got to let the music run with it, and sometimes you have to let the sound effects run with it, because they fight, you know. It's hard to get it all through the little pinhole of, of the theater. You know, some theaters have pretty bad sound. But you can't see this movie in a cheap theater. I, I'm definitely making a I would recommend. I would recommend that people seek out 
out 70 millimeter prints and go to those selected theaters if they can. But on the other hand, the mark of a good movie, like you said, is a film that will play with the sound turned down. And I think it's got a good story, too. And so. in any language for this, for sure, in this one. Uh, congratulations. All right. It's thanks very film. much. Bye.